Hello and welcome back, dear friends. It's me, Odo. We are back in our campaign of Half on the Wrath of the Righteous. And we are running around to um, conquer Brazen, which is here. Um, but before we can do this, there is a lot of armies in between us and them. And I just saw that our officer is um, gaining another level. So let's just do this. Master of Maneuver 2 increases the maximum size of the army by one per unit per level of this feat. So we could take two people inside. That's really great. Let's do this. So our army would be able to have space for five people. Okay. So, now that we have space for five, we can take these guys. Let's take them. Recruits. Why not? This army. Let's travel there. Follow my first army. So, how about you? Should we attack this second demon army at once, or should we just take this army with us? We'll be able to kill them without losing stuff. We have 30 out of four, 34 mana, so no. Let's just say we go and fetch this army. Are they also cold iron light maze? Uh, fear the season it is do they have any powers they on hand self ah, they can they can heal others that's nice they can also smite evil okay about you Power attack? Really? How can I do this? They can also do a power attack. Interesting. We'll have to look at that in the next fight. If we can do this. So now we are level 4. That's nice. Um, yeah, let's go back to our group. I went further above and got some rare gens here. And now let's camp. She's not really a paladin. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like she's a paladin. Okay, let's continue. Let's see. I want to go to the Chili Creek. 
here we have uh, some small um, quests. So let's do this. And next we will try to kill the next one. Probably not in this session anymore. Okay. My dear Pete, what did you say? You said Grunz, Grunz in German? Hmm. Chernog. There is the, the nice, lovely priest. Chenok walks thoughtfully around the grove. He pauses in front of the trees, lingering here, there, for some time. He seems to be examining something careful. At the sound of your footsteps, he turns around abruptly, but the anxious expression on his face quickly gives way to an amiable smile. Commander, it's so good to see you. Seems you've found time to visit our quiet backwater after all. I mean, you are inside, uh, uh, in between a lot of demonic forces, so I had to go there anyway. Could be mistaken, but it looked like you were frightened by my arrival. Oh no, you startled me, that's all. It's my overactive imagination. I still can't get used to living in such a small village town where I grew up was a good deal larger, and it was located near a trade road, route, so there were always lots of new faces and plenty of people bustling around. Here, though, it's different. The moment you step outside the village, you're all alone. You can walk for miles in any direction with only the birds and animals for company. This is, of course, the way Era still teaches us to live. Truth be told, still makes me feel somewhat uncomfortable. Why were you looking at those trees? See for yourself. He points to one of the branches and among the leaves you notice a small doll made of grass and seaweed tied with blue ribbon. I keep finding them here in the grove. I think it's some kind of local ritual. I've asked the villagers to tell me what it means, but they won't give me an answer. I just don't understand the reason for all this secrecy. Well, I'm getting used to the way of things. I still get the occasional sidelong glance from the locals, but that's not surprising. After all, I'm just some stranger who decided to show up without an invitation and settle down in the village. But the church warned us about this. Such caution is to be expected at first. I have to be. I have to do my best to earn their trust. I heal. I purify the water. I give blessings. Sooner or later, they will accept me as one of their own. Probably, if you are what you say you. It's so quiet here. War makes you forget what peace feels like. I understand. My time in Canabras gave me a small taste of war. I only had to live through it for a few days, but I know the horrors. I've witnessed, I witnessed, will haunt my nightmares. I I know the horrors, horrors I witnessed will haunt my nightmares for years to come. Okay, strange sentence. I cannot imagine how hard it is for those like yourself, soldiers who have given their lives to this cause priest places a hand on his heart. You have chosen to fight here in order to protect our peaceful and quiet life here, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, I'm a bit distrustful uh, from the Pathfinder Kingmaker series where the Saren Ray priest, who also talked like that, was a traitor. <laughs> So this time, uh, Ember must be the traitor. I mean, there must be a traitor in my in my camp. It's so foreseeable. Now you always have to have a twist somewhere. <laughs> I mean, when I was younger, 
there were uh, movies, and when in the movie there was a twist somewhere at the end or in between or in the middle of the of the movie, it was uh, considered it was considered um, well done and uh, surprisingly. But today it's like um, every series, every movie, every game you watch, there is always a twist applied. So uh, it's not very uh, what's it called? Unforeseeable. <laughs> okay, what do the locals think of Era still? They are indifferent. They are pragmatic people, you know. They don't have time for theology. If all dead eye helps them survive, that's good enough for them. You know, some priests get overzealous with sermons. They demand that people pray, observe all the rituals, make sacrifices. Then those priests, all holy and pious, are surprised when locals kick them out of the village, right into the nearest ditch. The priest laughs. I was taught differently. First, you have to prove your worth. You have to show them why you and your deity are useful. It's only after they've begun to trust you and start asking questions about your faith that you can really share your beliefs. Then you can tell them all about old dead eye and his teachings. Well then, will you show me around the village? Of course, let's go. You'll get to meet the locals, see how we live. Maybe you'll even manage to get some peace and quiet, a temporary respite from the hardships of war. Don't be offended. If they start gawking at you, in this remote village, people have never seen a fox again. Come to think of it, people have never seen your kin where I grew up either, and I bet that even in Canabras you'd seem exotic to many. But I have already explained everything to the locals as best I could, so they shouldn't stare too openly or ask silly questions. Where are you going? small doll made of grass is tied on the ribbon on the tree with a dark blue ribbon. Dolls hang from the branches. Their grass and seaweed bodies slowly rotting away. More dolls, a straw doll clad in a small, skillfully embroidered light blue dress. Okay. Map. A dire wolf? Interesting. In the middle of the... In the middle of the... Okay. Interesting. He's not showing me around. I'll have to find everything myself. Old faded blue ribbon hangs from the branches of the tree. Okay. We could kill the elk for some XP. Probably shouldn't. A piece of grey ribbon hangs from the branch. Okay. So this is older here. Ah, Chernock is following us. Interesting. What a beast. We've got you now. Watch out for those huge teeth. Don't let them catch you. Okay. Sounds interesting. Aim for their, her throat and belly. Few scales there. Don't be afraid, everyone. We fought ones bigger than this.
Okay, um, let's move forward. Let's get ready for battle. Melissa. Um, a Hydra, but nearly dead. Interesting. Ah, uh, come on. Don't do this. That's us Spectre. Just a level 5 monster. Killed it. Mark Hill, that'll teach you to mess with us. A man with green eyes, the broad shoulders of a swimmer, and the calloused hands of a fisherman shakes his fist at the beast's motionless carcass. Something's got them all worked up. That's the second time they've crawled out this month. So let them come. A woman, her eyes, the same shade of green as the fisherman smiles at you. It's not the first time, and it won't be the last. But what's it matter? They can't hurt us, and we can use their hides to make a lot of waterproof coats and cloaks. Markil, Melissa, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This is Slav Bartfast, the commander of the Crusade. He's the one I told you about. Ah, a real hero in our little backwater. So nice of you to drop by. We've never had anyone so important to come to visit. Heroic acts are important, but sometimes it's good to leave the front lines and talk to ordinary people living ordinary lives. Anyway, welcome to Chili Creek. Hydras are usually far more dangerous. That beast was not at its full strength. I can tell you have an eye for such things. Well, of course it does. He's the commander of the crusade. He probably could have told you all that with his eyes shut, unless he smiles at you. It's all thanks to our mother, I see Rill. She takes care of her children, won't let anyone hurt them. She fills our nets with fish and drives away the monsters. That's right. And if she doesn't drive the beasts away, she'll weaken them. So we can kill them and harvest their hides. I see Rill. Who is that? She's right here. Markil nods toward the river. Did you think this was the salmon? No. It would take you half a day's rowing before you reached the river. It's a big. It's big, to be sure. Very important. The salmon flows through at least a dozen countries. But where would the Great Salem be if it wasn't set by thousands of little streams and creeks such as our dear icy rill? The people of Chili Creek hold the river in great reverence. The priest's observation is matter of fact, but you notice his voice sounds a bit strained. Ah, there's the problem. <laughs> they are heathens. Don't like Aristil, but the river goddess. How can we not? Our whole lives are built around the river. From the wedding reef we send down its stream to the funeral boat that floats away on the waters when the time comes. Our mother, icy rill, feeds us, gives us water, protects us. With a kind smile, Mark Hill casts a sidelong glance at the frowning priests. The gods are far away. But our icy rill is right here, so we treat her with respect. So this is the reason for the dolls, I think, I guess. You are related? Right you are. Mark Hill ruffles Molasses' hair. She laughs and tweaks his nose. She's my little sister. Takes after our granny. May her memory never fade. He was always restless. Couldn't 
sit still and Maness is just the same. She's always up to something. And you took after your our grandpa. Made the river silky his feather bed. You're as brave as he was and just as stubborn. Okay, I can charge here. Well, how should I put this? Our village is too small for anyone to be in charge. We just happen to know a thing or two about using a weapon. So if some nasty creature comes crawling out of the river, we give the orders. But when it comes to fishing or fixing nets, we'll be the ones following orders. We are not an army and there are no officers here. We all live together, solve our problems together, and serve the icy reel together. Well, this looks like an anarchic, um, like an anarchic society. Interesting. Although, truth be told, it's only been in the last few years that people have really started listening to us. Before that, villagers kept to themselves, and no one wanted to go poking their nose into anyone else's business. When we first came up with the idea to start trading on the river, the other villagers stubbornly dug in their heels. But after money and goods began to flow into the village, they changed their minds. Yes, the village has been growing. We are getting to see all sorts of things we had only ever heard about before. The year before last, we had a fair and people came all the way from Canabras to attend. Then a priest came, and we'd never seen one of those before in these parts. And now, who'd have thought the commander of the crusade has decided to pay us a visit? And not just the commander, but a child of the fox people. We hadn't even heard of your kind before the priest told us about you. Lots of wonders in, the wo in this world, they never stop. What are those grass stalls that hang from the tree in the grove? Shadow passes over Markil's face and he looks away. There's nothing much to tell, really. An old local custom. It's just a ritual. Manessa adds in a low voice. No one seems willing to share any further details with you. How is life in the village now that you've got a priest? Not much has changed, Markil shrugs and smiles amiably. He's a good lad. He does some healing, never bothers us with sermons. Why, he's even learning to fish in his spare time. He also knows a lot of songs, and when he sings, it makes you want to sit and listen. World wound is not f that far away. Have you ever been attacked by demons? No, we've never seen any. Our mother, I see real, keeps us safe. She would let, she would never let such abominations get near us. Uh, well, I have to go. Back to the front. I can't even imagine the nightmarish creatures you have to fight there. Have a safe journey and a swift victory. Okay. Yes, we got the hide of the Hydra. No, we've got the eye of the Hydra. <laughs> Villagers. Ooh. Loot. Pick the lock. Come on, Wolf Chip, you can do this. Yeah, well, I blame you. Do it again. Wait, what? You failed two times? You rolled a one? And the first time you rolled a two? Really? Okay, three times the job. This is my kind of work. Yeah, of course gloves. Oppressor's gloves. 
These gloves grant the wearer a plus two bonus on persuasion skill checks made to intimidate. In addition, whenever the wearer of these gloves <clears throat> confirms a critical hit, the enemy suffers a minus two penalty on saving throws against mind affecting conditions for two rounds. Okay. <sighs> so, what if. How about you getting some gloves? You have braces of armor plus two. So, how about you take these two instead of that? Oh, these are gauntlets, not armor. Not braces. Interesting. Ooh, another, another box full of stuff. More stuff. And the village. There is Malessa. And other villagers. And Marku. And more loot. It's a book. Fairy Tales of Aniston. I hope I don't have to read that. Oh, there is Janok. Another book, The Notes of a Traveling Priest Against the Coven. Okay, whatever. Before talking to anyone, we will loot everything that we find. That's the right way to do it. Who was that? Wheel of Positive Energy. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. And a recipe as well. And ducks. There are ducks, and villagers, and oh, let's move there first. Oh, nice. Come on, wool chief, do your best. If something happens, it will happen in there, not here. Things stay quiet around here, thanks to the river. That's how it should be. Okay. What's that? Golden trinket. And more we'll stuff. Did we open every box? Yep, we opened every box. So there are probably two people we'll have to we'll have to talk to these two or uh, three people and Chernauk. Talk to him first. Oh, but we, we talked about that all. Mm -hmm. I need a welcome day off and experience nightmares when they sleep. Have any trouble with nightmares here? This is a question we couldn't ask before. 
No troubles with the nightmares here. The village is located on the outskirts of the world wound. So perhaps that's why. Hmm. Probably not. I think they have some other things to do here. I have to go. So, let's talk to these two. Look, the commander's here. Welcome back. Oh my god, it's too much. Near the world wound, they often experience. Don't know what you're talking about. If I'm honest, I sleep like a dead man. Nothing to complain. Do we speak with both of them? Ah, oh, yeah, we speak with both of them. Uh, not much happens in the village. I'm sure you have a lot going on, and stuff is always happening in the cities and on the front lines. But things are pretty quiet out here. But let's see. What's the latest news from our little village? Well, we went fishing and caught some rough. They were big too. Nice and plump. Fast as piglets. Fat as piglets. <laughs> I tell you, what else? Weevils have eaten through our carrots. They gobbled up everything down to the last stalk. Then the other day, old Bragg went up to fix his roof and took a hard fall. If it hadn't been for Chenark and his prayers, he'd have kicked the bucket by now. No doubt about that. You must think it's ridiculous to call any of this news. Also, Chenok is just downright wonderful. I don't know, maybe his prayers are working, or maybe he just has a lucky touch. But whenever he blesses me, I always catch a boatload of fish. Also, he sings like an... Enough already, Marco frowns. Chenok this, Chenok that. It's all I ever hear you talk about. Oh, she's got a crush on him. That's her. And deities here? Faith, religions, deities. With all due respect, Chenok, no one out here has time for such things. Maybe people in the city can go around saying prayers and listening to sermons. But in a backwater place like this, they are just blah, 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 blah. Our mother, I see real. Yeah, but this sounds like she's a goddess to you. Yeah, the river doesn't care about prayers or sacrifices. If Icy Rill wants something in, in exchange for her help, she just takes it without asking. Okay. Look very much. Yeah, we asked that before. We also asked that before. We also asked that before. And they didn't tell us anything. I have to go. Okay. Interesting. Interesting that it's nothing that did something here. <laughs> Was it just uh, that they wanted me to go there? <laughs> I mean, this was, this was pointless. The only thing I got from here was a bit loot. Nothing else. No XP, no... I mean... We can't even talk to these guys. Caught a spike the other day, it was big as a crocodile. Hmm. Okay. We'll stop for here here for today. See you soon. Bye.